This is Tom Bernanke and today I'm talking about lumps and bumps on the bottom of your plantar fascia and ligaments. These are called plantar fibromatosis or plantar fibromas. There's a lot of great new evidence out in the research. This is technically a tumor, but it's non-cancerous. So there's a lot of great things you can do. I'm gonna go over what's worked great for me and my patients, and it's a lot of practical non-surgery stuff. I'm gonna go over why surgery is sometimes a good idea, why injections are a good idea, and what you can do at home to start getting great results immediately. And we're starting with those tips right now. So a plantar fibroma is a bump. It can generally occur in the arch. It is generally on the inside of the arch or the center of the arch. So what happens is this is technically a tumor. So there's cells called myofibroblasts and fibroblasts that actually grow and form a lump. And what happens is if this happens only a few weeks in, there's a lot of cells that we can detect there on a biochemical or histology level. But as it sticks around for months or years, it becomes scar tissue and mostly collagen where it's uneven scar tissue and collagen. People always come to see us in that chronic stage. It's rare that people catch it early, but if it is caught early, it is easier to treat. The symptoms are it feels like a big lump and that lump can get sore. You feel it more when you get up in the morning, your first 10 steps, but as you go through the day, it's like a golf ball stuck in your arch that starts to throb and ache and become bruised. It has a 25% chance of being caught through both feet and there could be multiple bumps. Sometimes it feels like that packing paper where you can pop those little uh, bubbles. It can also happen in your hands. In your hands, it's called the Dupuytren's contracture and actually uh, compresses your fingers or twists your fingers in. I see patients where they have their fingers bent in. That generally doesn't happen in the foot because you're walking on it and you're keeping it stretched out. How do you diagnose this? You go see your podiatrist and what we do is we can grab an x-ray to make sure there's no broken bones, no arthritis, because sometimes it's a heel spur, sometimes it's plantar fasciitis, sometimes it's an entrapped nerve, sometimes you actually tore your plantar fascia. So what happens is if we know that it's inside the plantar fascia in the office, we can grab an ultrasound. So an ultrasound, you can actually see a big lump with fluid, but I'm not gonna get too carried away with ultrasounds and MRIs because realistically, it's pretty clear to see that it's a plantar fibroma and we can start getting it better pretty quickly. Risk factors for a plantar fibroma are number one, family history. So it could be genetic. So if a family member has them, you're more likely to have them. Number two is unfortunately obesity. If you weigh a lot, you're more likely to have pressure on your plantar fascia. If you injured it, like if you tore your plantar fascia, you could have a lump that's left over there. Diabetes, poor flexibility, other foot problems, the more likely you are to have plantar fasciitis or tightness or an injury that's making you compensate and use your foot more, you're more likely to get it. Smoking and alcohol and poor health overall are more likely to cause it. So you can see there's a lot of correctable biomechanical factors here, and that plays into a lot of how we're gonna fix this. Further risk factors are if you're over 30, you're more likely to get it. If you're under 30, this is very rare. Surgery, does surgery work for this thing? Surgery shows that within three years, the paper I was just reading shows about a 60% recurrence rate. It's probably not that high, that seems a little bit high to me, but the point is surgery can be dangerous. Where you do want surgery is sometimes a biopsy is needed if it looks suspicious because that rules out cancer. This could be what's called a synovial sarcoma or other types of sarcomas. So into the treatments. So there is a lot of treatments like radiation. I was reading about radiation. I personally don't do this because there's a lot of side effects with radiation. I don't even, people know radiation is not good for you. So that's not something I do, but potentially if it was all over your body, you might consider this, but that's very rare. Number two, there's medications, tamoxifen 
is a medication that's also used in cancer that's been shown to be effective. But again, I don't use that because that's more of a chemotherapy. And again, chemotherapy, radiation, not something I'm doing. It's a little bit more side effects. But there is a cream called Verapamil. When you look up Verapamil, it's not, it's something that's off label. The studies aren't really confirming that this works, but any conference you go to, people always claim it works. This is made by places like compound pharmacies. So sometimes you can get a prescription for Verapamil and we can do that necessarily, but I found the need to not have to do that. And also I love using shockwave therapy. In the office, we have shockwave therapy. This can break it up and stimulate it through biochemical factors to regenerate and to bring new fresh tissue and get rid of the hard, thick scar tissue. So through stretching, through shockwave, all these things do is break up the scar tissue and stimulate good new flexible tissue to develop in that lump. If it's sore, what you wanna do is injections. Now this is a controversial subject because people are afraid of steroids, but there's a paper out there. They actually took injections of 15 to 30 micrograms of steroid and they injected it into the nodule. They took four to six week breaks and they did three to five total injections per patient. And the patients actually had really good results. So they said in their paper that the results were slightly better than surgery, which is pretty good because nobody wants to get poked in the arch by a needle, but it's skipping surgery. And what it does do is it does cool down the pain and the nodule goes away. Massaging and stretching the arch and the Achilles tendon. This is where we get great results. Realistically, using a massage stick, using a massage roller, stretching, these work amazingly well. I see great results with this. It breaks up the nodule pretty quickly. One of the most important things is to warm up your muscles, massage them before you stretch them. This pays dividends all day long. Why, why work on the calf muscle? Because you wanna warm it up so your ankle is more flexible and then your plantar fascia where your nodule is will be more flexible. So see right there, I'm actually breaking up the scar tissue, making it flexible, getting all that inflammatory fluid out of there. Another thing you can do, this is the ice ball, this is the spike ball, there's ice balls out there, there's iced massage rollers. They all do a great job because they massage the fluid out of your arch and what that does is gradually over time, break up the scarred collagen and stimulate your body to create new types. So I recommend massage rolling your thighs, your hamstrings, your glutes, your calf muscles, everything you can, even your hips, uh, your lower back you can foam roll. This all makes you more flexible so that when you start stretching, you instantly cut down your rate of damaging your plantar fascia and developing a nodule. You limit back pain, hamstring pain, calf pain. Studies show 30 to 60 seconds of stretching each muscle group after 30 to 60 seconds of massaging gets you amazing results for the majority of the day. You could even do this in the morning and then again at lunchtime. So see right here, I'm stretching just 30 seconds. You don't wanna turn your foot out. You wanna have it turned in because when you turn your foot out, that just dislocates your ankle. So see how much more flexible I'm getting here? I could barely touch my toes in the morning, but see how much more I get there? That's after some 30 to 60 seconds per muscle of massaging with a $10 stick and then stretching. Unbelievably good results when it comes to this type of therapy. Here's my preferred route. Realistically, you want to get a soft insert because those risk factors, overweight, foot problems, flat footedness, all that kind of stuff. If you correct that, the nodule gradually gets better. So as you're making the pain go away, you're massaging, you're icing, you're stretching, you're possibly injecting with your podiatrist. So what you want to do is rather than land on your foot where your plantar fascia is stretching out and tugging on that nodule, see right here, the insert stabilizes your arch. And what happens is it's not flattening out like it is right there. So see, no real flattening, and there you have flattening. The problem is if your nodule is so big, see how I have a softer insert right here? You don't wanna grab a hard custom insert. I actually use scissors to cut a hole out where the nodule is for patients. So you wanna start with a cheap soft insert and start with that. And then you put that insert 
So say this was my soft insert, you put it into a good shoe. So look at this, a shoe that supports your heel, your arch, a nice soft midsole with a lot of flex in the front, that's how you take care of your nodule. So a soft, cheap insert for a couple bucks, cut out a hole where the nodule is so it provides you support. Good supportive shoes, massage, put some ice, some anti-inflammatory cream, maybe some verapamil, and that's how you get better and skip surgery. That will make you feel better until you're able to lose weight, gain muscle mass, and get flexible. And that's how you fix your plantar fibromatosis.